What's up, dude? Today I've taken a deep dive into the nooks and crannies of the internet to extract a near identical replica of the famous Shack Burger from Shake Shack. There's no time to waste, my friends. Now let's go! The first step was, of course, to head over to the nearest Shake Shack to start our reconnaissance mission. And I actually tried ordering my burger from a real human being, but they pointed me to this machine instead. So I just ordered a couple Shack Burgers for us to taste for the video. But quick little bit of editing magic to fix this number and then it was time for a taste. And now if you ask me, the area in which a Shake Shack burger really shines is the grind and the smash on their beef. I mean, come on, look at that glassy, browned, crispy goodness. I had to give it a taste while it was still hot, but we really need to get this back to the kitchen to inspect it further. Now that we're back in the kitchen, let's take a closer look at this burger. I really want to see what's going on. We're going to get into a little bit of a dissection phase right now. Oh, wow. Mm, I can't see anything with these on. This is insane. These are my wife's glasses. I don't wear glasses. Here we go, my friends. Mm. First thing I noticed upon opening this burger, not very good sauce distribution. A little bit of, that's a little bit of an employee error, Shake Shack, a little bit of an employee error. Now the lettuce has been in here steaming for a while, so obviously we're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. The bun is a potato roll, and what they do is they leave that hinge on, as you can see, meaning they don't split the bun all the way open. That is the classic Shake Shack move. These two little tomatoes, God, that's sad. Couldn't we have uh, got a little bit of a bigger slice of tomato here, Shake Shack? That would have been nice. I feel like it's looking at, like it's angry. You see that? Let me see if I can just get into this sauce. Ooh, look at that, that's thick, you were right. Ew. Trying the sauce on its own, actually, I don't know if it's because it's been sitting for a while. To me, that doesn't um, have the most appealing flavor. I'm just calling it how I see it. I don't know, something fishy about that. Like, ew, I don't like that at all. Let's get into the meat here. Let me just say the bun and the meat is my favorite part about Shake Shack. That light, pillowy, delicious bun with that crispy little interior is awesome. And the blend of their meat is just melt in your mouth delicious with those little seared edges that you get. Really, really good. Mm, mm. They're killing it with their beef blend. Has the American cheese, obviously. That's just an incredible beefy flavor. Okay, I think I've seen enough. Let's recreate this thing. Like many good burgers, it all starts with the grind. And based on my internet research, I've discovered that Shake Shack uses a blend of sirloin, brisket, and chuck roast. Although I have seen some mixed opinions on Reddit from years ago where people say they use even ribeye and skirt steak. So who knows exactly, but I think this is gonna be a really good blend. All I need to do with my meat is cut it into pieces that are gonna fit inside of my meat grinder. I know what a lot of you are thinking right now, Sonny, I don't have a meat grinder, Sonny. I'm not gonna grind my own meat. Sonny, go f yourself. You're ugly, Sonny, you're bald. Sonny, your head is too big. You have a big head. Why are you so jumpy, Sonny? Why do you swear? I know what you're thinking, right? Sonny, you got a small mouth. I don't have a small mouth. That's not even true. Yeah. Don't worry, just buy 80-20 ground beef, meaning 20% fat from your local supermarket. That's gonna be just fine. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, grinding your own meat is gonna give you something that is arguably just a cut above. Now, when you're grinding meat, you wanna stick your attachment in the freezer for about an hour. That will help keep everything really cold. That is just standard procedure when grinding meat. You don't want it to warm up. And again, based on my research, I think this is roughly the size that Shake Shack does in their restaurants. So that's what we went for. Turn this on to medium speed, and we'll just start pushing our little meat hunks through in no particular order. The next important step here has to do with being really gentle with this meat. We don't wanna like, you know, you know what I mean? Uh-uh, like look, watch. I don't wanna mix the crap out of this, right? We're not making sausages. We're not making sausages. I don't know what Shake Shack exactly does at this stage, but I just know what I would do in terms of making a good burger. We don't want it all mixed into oblivion. It's gonna get a little bit denser that way and won't be as fall apart and melty in your mouth. So I'm just doing it like that, just to make sure those three meats are mixed together and leaving it here. Now that it's lightly mixed, as far as the size goes, four ounces is what Shake Shack does. So a double quarter pounder would be, let's just carry the two and then put the three and then the, what is it? They carry the four and they put the three and they carry the four. So that would be an eight ounce burger, half pound. Yeah, yeah, it's just four twice. I'm going real selective with this. There we go, four ounces. And again, at this point, I'm not gonna smash this burger up. Just, that's it. It's in a rough ball. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay, Marcus, let's play a game. Whoever gets closest to four ounces gets to elbow the other person in the arm. 4.09. Good luck, dude. <sighs> yep, I'm losing this. Getting, warming up my uh, elbow here. All right, what are we doing? What are we doing? Four ounces. Maybe a little bit more than that. We need a little bit. Oh, I can feel it. Please that one's it. don't let him beat no. me. That would oh, suck. I mean, he's. No. Oh, I'm zoning in. Okay, we need a little bit more. We need a little bit more. Before we put it down, what's your guess on what I got? Let me see. 
you, you can't you can't go back for more after I tell you, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't. Four point three. I got a heavy boy. Put it down. Fuck! Ah, it's so bad. Four point six. You got four warm ups. To ensure that these burgers are the best that they can possibly be, I need the best possible cookware, which is why I'll be using the carbon steel griddle from Made in Cookware, who is the sponsor of today's video. And to be very honest with you, I am extremely proud to have them because I was using their products for years before they ever sponsored this channel. And don't just take my word for it, there are three Michelin star restaurants like Alinea in Chicago and La Bernadine in New York City who use these very same pans in their kitchens. I really love what Made in is doing because they're designing professional quality cookware for you, the home cook. And for the price, I really do think that these pans are the best bang for your buck. The griddle set comes with the carbon steel griddle, of course, as well as this stainless steel press to seal the deal. And as you can see here, this duo does an incredible job when you're trying to make a great smash burger. You guys, I seriously freaking love this griddle. I love the way it looks. I love how it heats up and retains its heat. The carbon steel material is a perfect hybrid of cast iron and stainless steel, which means it heats up quickly and gives you incredible heat control. It can reach temperatures of up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, all while staying naturally non-stick. You can throw this inside on your stove, you can take it outside, set it over your grill, you could take this thing camping and put it over an open flame. It really is an awesome tool to have as part of your kit. You can also do an amazing grilled cheese, you can even cook pork chops, steak, chicken, whatever. Check out the Carbon Steel Griddle and Maiden's other cookware by using the link down in the description to save on your order. Thank you Maiden for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to the recipe. Before cooking these burgers, we need to talk about the shack sauce that goes on the shack burger. And I found a video on the Tasty YouTube channel from Mark Rosati, who's the director of food at Shake Shack. And in that video, he showed how to make the Shack sauce, but it was really simple. It was just mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, tiny bit of ketchup, tiny bit of pickle brine, and a pinch of cayenne. The recipe in that video is from the Shake Shack book, and he said that this recipe is not the same as the one that they use at the restaurant. He said it's a simplified version because the one they serve at the restaurant itself is way more complicated and labor intensive. But to me, that kind of just sounds like they don't want to give away the secret recipe. I will put that recipe linked down in the description but today I've got a special sauce that I think is gonna be just way better I know we're doing a copycat version but trust me it's just gonna be better it really is check it out we're starting with mayonnaise and I am using Duke's mayo full disclosure just good mayonnaise recipe for this one will be in the description as well ketchup yellow mustard I feel like that's just the right flavor for special sauce relish onion powder garlic powder and a little touch of smoked paprika I know special sauce is like just this silly little American thing but I'll always love it look at this little clown food what is this and we are are getting a similar color to Shake Shack, although a little bit deeper. Let's get in here with the pinky taste. Mm. Marcus, come taste this, dude. I'm acting like I just did some culinary thing. I didn't do shit, man. I just mixed together stuff that other people did. <laughs> I hate that the truth. This one tastes mad good. Mm. One of the hardest parts of this video and recreating the Shack burger was finding the right bun. I'm very selective about the bun and you do need a good potato roll to recreate this burger. And so the best brand that I've found is Martin's. That famous Dutch taste. This is not sponsored. I just want you guys to be able to recreate this, right? Oh yeah. They're very soft and pillowy. They look honestly just like a Shake Shack bun and they're hinged, which is exactly what we need to recreate the Shack burger. However, if you can't find these, just find a good potato roll near you, that will work. Now it's time for the most important step of this whole process and that is actually making the smash burger itself. Get all your balls onto a plate and season one side with a mixture of salt and pepper. Now place them season size down onto your preheated medium high heat griddle and immediately place a little piece of parchment paper on top top and smash them down using a burger press or a spatula. At this point, you need to season the other side with salt and pepper. Now, the most important part of this whole burger making process is that you do not move these around. Once they're stuck down, you just leave them like that until they're ready to flip. And it might take anywhere from two and a half to three minutes, depending on the heat of your griddle and the size of your burger. The second most important part of making a great smash burger is making sure you scrape up all that brown flaky meat off the griddle. To do this, you want to flip your spatula over so you can scrape scrape it off more effectively. You'll even see a lot of these smash burger places using a paint scraper to do that. It's not completely necessary, but you could get one if you want. And as soon as you flip your burger over, you wanna hit it with that American cheese straight away. And while that's happening, we can finish up the buns by brushing them with a little bit of melted butter and then just toasting lightly for about a minute or so. They wanna have a little bit of crispiness on the edge, but mostly they wanna remain pillowy and soft. The last thing we need to do is just build our burger up and then give this thing a taste to see how it measures up. All right, Marcus, here we go, dude. Let's again first taste Shake Shack. Note the flavor of the beef. I really like their beef. Before we even try this, I'm incredibly happy 
with how that beef turned out. It looked just like Shake Shack. Let's get a, a look at that cross section. Hold on. Cheers. Batman, help! <laughs> Our beef is similar. Our secret sauce slaps theirs in the face. Mm -hmm. Texture and taste of beef, really close to what Shake Shack does. Bun, almost completely identical. The real differences here are the sauce that adds so much more flavor and just obviously having like a healthy looking lettuce and tomato. That was so good, man. The way that we pressed that beef and then scraped it off the griddle and you saw it when we flipped those crispy little edges, holy shit. Mm. Make the sauce, make the burger, make it all. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with this, yum. Highly recommend. Thanks for watching today, my friend. Below in the description will be links to products and equipment that I love to use here on this channel. If you need recipes in written form, we just released our Master in the Making ebook with 55 of my top recipes. And if you wanna keep learning today, here are two more incredible burger recipes. This Oklahoma onion burger was absolutely insane. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out.